Hello and welcome back to my GDevelop platformer tutorial series. Sorry I haven't made a video in ages, but <clears throat> here we go. So in this video we're going to make a menu and we're going to make a graphical user interface for this or a GUI. So we're just going to go to the project and if you haven't already you can make a main menu. Once you've done that you can click on it. Now here is the main menu. It's just a box that is the same size as your game. What we want to do is we want to get UI elements like buttons and text. So first of all we can just add a sprite. This is going to be our button so we can call this start, I don't know, underscore button. That's not an underscore. There we go. Now we're going to add an animation to this. So we can click on add and go to where it is. Mine's in a UI folder that I put in. Uh, once again, I'll have all of the links in the description below for you to get all these. So if we go into the buttons, you can see that we have all of these here. So <clears throat> you can resize them and put on text in an external um, editor or in GDevelop's Piscal, but I'm not going to do that just for simplicity's sake. So I'm just going to grab this blue button here, blue underscore button zero zero. The down version of this button would be blue underscore button zero one. And then there are lots of different blue buttons. There are smaller blue buttons. There are uh, blue outline buttons. There are check marks, circles, panels, all these things. So we're just going to open this one. And this is coming up because that PNG file is outside of the folder that is where my project is saved. So I'm going to press OK. <clears throat> that just makes a copy of it. And this is now, you know, obviously what this is. So if we press play, you'll see we have a button, but it does nothing at the moment because we haven't told it to do anything. So, so I'm just going to quickly add an animation and this will be uh, what happens when we go over the objects. So we can add it and I'm just going to grab the folder again buttons and this is the number one here okay and click apply so now it still won't do anything because we haven't done anything in the events and so we're going to go into the events now we can add a new event by just doing this once again and add a condition what we're going to do is we're going to have it so when the cursor goes over the button it will change the animation to uh, the second one but when the cursor goes off of it it will change the animation to the, fir to the first one and so we're just going to go to mouse and touch uh, the mouse is on an object and start button press ok and now we have when the cursor is on that so when the cursor is on it we just want to change the animation so I'm just going to search for animation here Change, change the animation of start button, choose an operator, we can just set it to, and then 1. Because if you remember, this is number 1 and this is 0 because lists start at 0 and not 1 in programming. So now when we press play, we hover our mouse over it, it will change the animation. But you'll see that it doesn't go down like buttons would, it, it just stays in the same place and the shadow just gets removed. So what we can do is we can move it down a little bit. So we can change the position of an object. So we can change the Y position of this. And we can just uh, either set it or add it. If you know the starting location of your button, you can just set it to minus 2 pixels or like minus whatever pixels. Um, that your button is underneath that or you can add or subtract so I'm going to subtract and let's do two pixels and just see what happens and you'll notice that this isn't the outcome that we want because it just goes up and so we want to add two pixels and you'll see it just goes down but it only goes down when the cursor is over it but we don't want to do that we want to have it only go down by two once and so that is eas easily done. We just do a trigger once. Trigger once while true. OK. And 
there we go so I don't think that's actually exactly two let's try with uh, three see if that works okay I think it's four <laughs> hopefully it's four and there you go we have that but you will see that now it just goes down every time and you don't really want that and so you can either fix this in the events or just by doing a super simple thing um, and uh, avoiding all the hassle of using the events you can just edit this image with Piscal and just add four pixels on the bottom and then move it down four pixels so you can go to the resize option here the height we can add four pixels to making it 49 resize and just move it down to the very bottom click save apply and now we don't need this or this actually I can press play and there you go that is your button although when we take our mouse off of it it doesn't go back to the first uh, animation so that's quite easily done we, we can just control C and control V this just copy and paste it and then right right click this press invert condition and so that is when the cursor is not on the start button we can change the animation to zero press play and now we have our button that goes down whenever we hover over it very simple and easy to do of course if you want to text on it you could do that in an external editor like Piscal or Photoshop or GIMP or Critter or whatever and just put text on that and then you have a button with text on it so now we're going to make it actually do something and go somewhere and so we're going to make this the play button right <clears throat> hence the name start button so when we click on it it will go to this game here that's quite easy we can just make a sub event of this and I'll say why in a second and go to mouse and touch and then when the mouse is pressed or touch held and you can change whatever mouse you want I'm just going to do the left mouse button and then we're just going to change the scene so scene and change the scene and the scene name I can't really remember yeah it's game here we go okay and we can just save this and play it so when we click outside of it it doesn't do anything when we click on it it goes to the game <clears throat> and so the reason we have this as a sub event of the cursor is on it is is because if we didn't then we would just click anywhere and it would go to the game and so we only want it to go to the game when the left mouse is down and the cursor is on the button I guess you could technically do it like this so then it doesn't work like that but then it works like this you could do it like that um, <coughs> but I prefer to just have it as a sub event just because it makes it look nicer in my opinion and so that's just how you do a simple button you can do this for an option um, scene as well you can add a button which says option and then make it go to an option scene you can also do this for quit um, and so I'll show you how to do that quickly now if I just let's say I just change this right <clears throat> you can just change you can change this from change scene and make it to quit, quit the game press OK and now whenever we click on it it quits the game that's also how you make a quit game feature I'm just going to change this back to here change, change the game and that is our start so you can also just import images like you did with your sprites for your player and your background in this scene you can just import <clears throat> or bring in an object with like a title uh, of, of your game name and just put that here and that will just go there you, and you can have like buttons down the side having like options, play, exit, customize or whatever you can also change the background color by going to layers and clicking on this and this will just change the background color of your game let's have it like a, a light a grayish thing and there's also effects so you can just add effects you can play with these 
you know, like uh, se sepia, sepia, black and white, brightness, blur, night, light, night, noise, all this stuff. Uh, you could probably do it on uh, sprite layers, so that would be really cool. And so, if I wanted to add an effect to this button, I could make a new layer right here, and then put this button on that new layer, and then add an effect to that layer. Let's say we wanted, uh, let's add some blur to that. Let's just call this blur. And you can just change these to your liking. And now when we play it, it should have a blur on it. There you go, it has a blur on it. So that is just a simple effect. We could change it to lower if we wanted. And that is just how you do it, nice and simple. Let's do it to three. That's just a nice, simple, easy way of <clears throat> making a simple UI for your game and main menu. So I hope this helped you, and uh, I hope I'll, I'll try and make a new video real soon. Goodbye.